Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Well, thank you so much for joining me once again as we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. And we've been working our way through Acts. We spent uh, some time in James because we are persuaded that was the very first New Testament epistle that was penned. And we finished James, and so we're going to go back into Acts chapter 11 today. So if you have a Bible, you can turn to Acts chapter 11, verse number 19, we left off in verse 18 last time. But let me kind of refresh your memory to bring you up to date as to where we're at in this chronology. Uh, when, when Luke penned the book of Acts, he did not give us dates, unfortunately. I wish he had. And, and so it's a matter of some conjecture as to when things happen. We know he's writing chronologically, but how many months and years transpired between events, he doesn't tell us. Uh, as I've looked into this question uh, and, and regarding to where we're starting off today in Acts eleven nineteen, how many years after the death of Jesus? How many years after the day of Pentecost? Uh, that's the question I've asked. No one knows for certain, but estimates vary from between uh, as early as 10 years after the day of Pentecost to as many as 15 years. Either way, I'm a little bit surprised, aren't you, that we've covered in basically 10 chapters at least 10 years of the church's history because, you know, Luke just hits the highlights. And we've just finished out uh, a his... Um, a telling of the of a watershed event in the history of the church when it was revealed to Peter, as you recall, that the Gentiles could be saved and cleansed by the blood of Jesus simply by repentance and believing in him, just like the Jews. And he was called on the carpet for it at the Church of Jerusalem and uh, was able to persuade them that this was indeed uh, the doing of the Lord. And so they all settled down then, and all of the church began to slowly wake up to the fact that what Jesus had said 10 years ago, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, <laughs> he really meant that. He didn't mean go and tell the Jews. He meant go tell everybody. And, and you know, it, it didn't sink in. Like so often, God's word doesn't sink in because of our thick heads and our traditions. But the church is waking up now, uh, and uh, they're going to be slowly but surely waking up to the fact that God is not expecting these new Gentile converts to keep the law of Moses. In fact, you know, he's not expecting Jewish believers in Jesus to keep the law of Moses. Yes, he is expecting them to keep the law of Christ, which includes the moral and ethical teachings of the law of Moses, as well as the law that God's placed in, in every conscience, okay? But these things, uh, you know, the church slowly wakes up to. But anyways, all that is to say this, as we launch back into the book of Acts. Here now, at least 10 years, maybe 12 or 15 years into the history of the New Testament church, but none of the New Testament has been written yet, except the book of James. That's it. Uh, conservative scholars tend to think that the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, weren't penned until 15 years after that even. And so the church makes it for 15 years without any New Testament books after 12, 10, 15 years, they get the book of James. It wasn't until maybe four, five years later, you know, where it could be as many as 20 years after the day of Pentecost, Paul pens the book of Galatians. And it's not even written to the whole church. It's just written to one region of the church, the Galatian region, because they're having certain problems that need to be corrected, certain heresies that are becoming prevalent there. So all of that is to say that when you hear a pastor say that some of the letters in red in our New Testament don't have application to us because they were spoken by Jesus under the old covenant, that's a good time to stand up and walk out. Because the early church, all they had was the uh, passing on of the verbal teachings of Jesus communicated orally throughout any, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and any of the epistles for that matter. 
And when they focus on the epistles almost exclusively and then and, and pushing off Jesus' word to the side, saying, well, this is the further revelation for the church and so on and so forth. And Jesus was ministering under the old covenant. And so his words apply primarily to Jews. And so therefore, we don't have to take that into consideration. Well, can I ask you, what did the church do for the first 10, 12, 15 years? You know, without any epistles at all written to it, only the oral communication of the teachings of Jesus. And why, in fact, did Jesus tell his disciples, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded to you? These are important questions. And, and if you get a chance to talk to that pastor who says that um, a lot of the letters, letters in red don't apply to us, that's a verse to bring up to them. Okay, and then ask them this question. How did the church make it without any epistles? Because all you do is teach exclusively from the epistles, and the church made it fine for at least 10 years without a single epistle. All they had were the words of Jesus and, of course, the Old Testament. All right, interesting stuff to think about. And I think there's one other thing worth commenting on all this. Um, and God help us to avoid this same pitfall, but you can become so involved in the dissection of uh, the Word of God and the epistles that are written to the churches and so forth that you can totally miss the main point. Because the main point is to obey Christ. And even the teaching of the epistles, that's what it all ultimately revolves around. We're trying to bring people to the obedience of faith and not be led astray by false and spurious doctrine. You know, and so what did the apostles teach for the first 10 years when it was not Matthew, Mark, or Luke for anyone to read, not the book of James for anyone to read, and no other New Testament epistle for any Christian to read? What did they do? They taught their disciples to obey all that Christ commanded. That was the focus of the early church. And so that ought to be our focus as well. You know, everything else should be secondary to that teach them to obey all that Christ commanded. God is not after people. God is not trying to make people into theologians. He's trying to make people fit for heaven. And that means they've got to be holy. Okay, wow. Here, seven and a half minutes has passed and we haven't even read our first verse in Acts chapter 11 and verse 19. But I assure you, we're gonna do that in our next segment, all right? Praise God. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.